Zoromi, please. Trying to rush me here. Hi. Hi, Bizarumi. What's up, man? How are you doing? Oh, hi, Chubies. Hello. Nice keep, buddy. Hello, Glossy Online. Hello, hello. Build the keyboard. <laughs> Oh, yo, Chubes, thanks for the 232 bits. It's bit timey. It's bit timey. Hello, Ridwan Kenobi. All right, so we can get started, yeah. Um, So I actually desoldered my old D6 V2. So here are the parts. So it's this like cyan color. Um, so like back when I built it, it looked like, let me see if I have the album from back then. I do, okay, here. Oh wait, oops. Bro, is that a Pandora? <laughs> wow, toxic. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, so back when I built it, it looked like this. Uh, it was, uh, I had gotten these kale cream samples from Novel Keys back when they released. Um, so we're probably gonna be using like the same key set and stuff. I, I still have it here. So we're just gonna rebuild this. Uh, back then we used the I used a brass plate <laughs> for night switches, uh, but this time I want to use uh, a palm plate. So I had a palm plate made. Uh, so this is a brass plate from back then. It's pretty scuffed. Um, kind of tarnished too. You can see it's like a little bit tarnished and stuff. And today I have this one. This is a palm plate. I could have made it ANSI only, but I was too lazy, so I didn't edit it. So, yeah. So, this is the mid piece. It's a blue mid piece. Um, polish it with tongue. <laughs> yeah. And here's a PCB. I actually already lubed the, the stabilizers. So, yeah. This, yeah, it's like a cyan. It's, it's like a blue green. It's like a cyan. Uh, I think it's more blue than green, but it definitely has a good tint of green. It's really nice though. Good streamer doing stabs off stream. Yeah, I mean, I, I just, yeah. I, I was just like, uh, I think I was watching TV and then I was just like, oh, you know what? I'm just gonna do the, I'm gonna do the stabs now. <laughs> Avoid myself the trouble for later. Stabs take me 40 minutes on stream? Oh, that sounds about right actually. Uh, I, I think it also takes me like 40 minutes to do that. So I, I don't blame you for that. Anyway, yeah. We can get it started. Um, so I need to check the stabs. So I looped the stabs, but I didn't check it. So I'm sure staying two hours on the stabs. Um, are you referring to a, a certain... Um, Asian American streamer of the name of Tai Hao Types. <laughs> it's not Nathan? <laughs> what? It's me. <laughs> it's me, Dio. Kono Dio da. Alright, so these are the same cream switches from back then, but uh, they're lubed. Uh, last, when I first built it, I was stock, and then I 
be soldered, lubed, and then soldered back on. But it was with the brass plate, so. Oh my god, this this bot is actually posting it too often. So I'm gonna redo I'm gonna change the change the the timing for that. It's going it's doing it too much. I'm trying to figure that out. Um timers. Uh, maybe like every couple episodes of Vinland Saga. Oh, Vinland Saga is really good, actually. It's, it's, it's a really good show. Uh, why am I rebuilding it? Because uh, I want a softer plate. And I, I was just bored of the brass plate, that's why. I just got bored of it. I just wanted something different. What switches do I have on the red one? Uh, there is a command exclamation keyboard for more information, but it's um, these have vintage blacks. Vinland is the least weeby show. Yeah, that is true. That is true. That is true. It's definitely the one of the less. I mean, it's like it's like it's like story about the the ex Vikings basically. Oh, hello, Wood. How are you doing? Oh, <laughs> would you marry me? <laughs> oh, Rob, what's up? Hello, hello. You rebuilt your 6.5 with a polycarb plate coming from a brass one feels much nicer. I don't know, I just think it's different. I think it's fine to just change it up every now and then. That's all. That's all. So these switches are lubed, but they like, they're not like very heavily lubed, which is kind of nice, but they're like my knights have broken in. So they actually feel really smooth and they don't have that like heavy, freshly lubed sort of feeling and sound to it, which is kind of nice. Um, okay. So. A lot of clack, but I don't care if there's no rattle. It's not like I press these so heavily. Oh, yo, hello, Keone, what's up? Uh, Chubbies, good seeing you. I'm gonna play some Apex. We'll catch you later. Stay safe in the Rona. Yeah, man, take care. Have, have fun playing Apex. I actually haven't played Apex in so long. What would you do if there was a rattle when you're testing that? I would um, take it apart and lube again, or like lube more, um, because I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna build it up if there's rattle. Yeah, you definitely don't want to build things up if you still have the rattle there. Like you definitely want to touch up your stuff or something. Like the last thing you want to do is have to desolder just because of the stabs and nothing else. A 
Apex is so good, it keeps getting better with each update. Oh, that's kind of exciting. I actually haven't played in so long that I don't even know what to follow. This will be a very quick build. Still too many hit reg issues. Oh, with um with Apex. Huh. I see. I I don't play as much to like <laughs> care too much, but you know. Yo, Spuds, hello. Welcome. Thanks for the follow. So, how have you guys been the past few weeks? Um, I know a lot of people obviously are just working from home and stuff. How's that coming along for you? Like, do you guys feel like at ease now or like, you know, like used to working from home if you're working from home or like if you're working in an essential function, like how, how's that going so far? Cause I mean, I know that there's probably gonna be some students around here too, so I'm sure that for students it will be like different to be doing things online. So that will be interesting for people. It's great, neat life is the norm. Oh, man. For those who don't know, um, neat is like not in education, employment, or training. I'm being onboarded at a NOC during all this and super hard. Remote work is a dream, but in a situation where they're preparing to train you on site and now they're not. Super weird. Oh, that's rough. Um, yeah, that's true. I mean, I think for me, I'm probably gonna be soon ramped up again. Uh, so I work in a research lab, so we're probably gonna go back in like in the next month or so, is what they're saying. Uh, they're preparing for a ramp up, so they're like making schedules and that kind of stuff. But so far, it's been kind of quiet, and yeah, I mean, especially here in New York City, it's been like particularly quiet. I mean, even on nice days, I am seeing very few people outside and stuff. Uh, well, I mean, not like at the parks. At the parks, parks are getting kind of full with people, and I avoid that because there's too many. Um, I've gotten less used to it, to be honest. I want to go back to lab. Yeah, me too, actually. Well, I mean, now that I'm done with my board exams, I, I want to go back into lab. I want to do something. I want to, like, move on forward with my life, is basically like, how I feel. Uh, it's like, being stuck in here makes me feel like I'm not doing anything else at all with my life. Like, nothing, like nothing's progressing. Like, yeah, everything's kind of stopped. Uh, Rob, you say, uh, I am actually back at work slinging paint on exteriors. Not, uh, no to get, wait, what is that? Oh, nice to get out of the house for sure, though. Yeah, no, I mean, I think it, it is nice. Uh, but at the same time, like, you know, there's like the risk and all that. So, I don't know. What kind of research do I conduct? Um, I work in a lab, uh, in a in a in an electrical engineering slash biomedical engineering lab. Um, we do research on 
imaging techniques for um, like cardiac procedures. Uh, so we develop catheters, uh, we work on uh, different imaging modalities that are used uh, during like catheterization and surgery, like interventional stuff. Um, and so we also study a lot of the tissue, like, you know, heart tissue. We also study like uterine tissue, breast tissue, uh, stuff that will be, would be helpful for, um, for like, uh, fields of research where they're trying to develop like let's say um new ways to ablate that tissue to like uh like new ways to like treat the tissue if they you know if if they're having problems like in the heart it would be like if you have like an arrhythmia then you can like shock the tissue from the inside and um that will like um stop the electricity from conducting inside um things like that I just make routers talk to each other. I know I'm I'm seeing all these big weird science scientific words, but um, I hope it, it makes a little bit of sense. What a nerd! <laughs> I mean, I'm in Pennsylvania working on suburban houses with just two other people rocking masks all day and trying not to be next to each other so hopeful exposure risk is minimal that way yeah no for sure I mean that's that's great it's good to hear um, you know even then you never know right but I think it's more so that I, I would definitely like to see people kind of approach the situation with care I don't think it's like that everywhere like people protesting that they're at home too much or something kind of weird and somewhat irresponsible I think but I mean anyway I won't say too much on that matter yo jerk chicken what's up man how are you doing this is gonna be a very quick stream but I actually you know what since I actually have time I might do two builds today because why not? Because these rebuilds are pretty easy. Like, I've already built these um, boards before, so I already know kind of how they go. And, like, nothing new about it. You know, these are just like, this is just like a sandwich mount board. Like, the other one I have, like, it's like a train mount. Um, and the switches are already done. We might, a two for one? Yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, I'll finish that so quickly and see how it goes if I'm pleased with it then we can just move on and honestly I would rather kind of get things out of the way even if I if even if it means that I won't stream for a while after like because I don't have anything else to do um, I would rather have that extra free time now you know but yeah one thing I do notice about these E6 V2 PCBs is that the PCB holes, the these like through holes are kind of smaller footprint than the regular ones that I've seen on like AL3 PCBs or Heine Bush PCBs, Welba PCBs are a little bit smaller. So when I was desoldering this guy, uh, it was a little bit of a pain because it had to be desoldered really cleanly for it to like actually come off. Or like I have to like wiggle the, the, the switches a lot to, to for it to come off. But I mean, you know, kind of cool color PCB actually. I really like this PCB color. I, I really want more like yellow, like orangey sort of colored PCBs. I think it's such a nice color. All these warm colors are super nice. I'm gonna turn on the fan, uh, if you'll excuse me. I'm doing it for my own health. Um, And, um, yeah. But yeah, no, the E6 V2 is such a great board. I mean, I know that, um, some people have 
I've had qualms with it, but I've, I've really enjoyed this particular board myself. But one thing I do have to look out for is the spacing. So the spacing is a little bit atypical on this guy. Um, from how I understand it, it's that it's a little bit narrower in terms of switch spacing. And so basically like the space bar can rub with like the keys right next to it. So like the alt keys if you like um, don't like line them up properly. So I need to just make sure that's not the case. Exclusive does great work. Yeah, no, I agree. Have you built a KP Republic board before? Yeah, I have, uh, actually. I built one for a friend of mine. Uh, it's been a while, though. But, yeah, I mean, it's just, like, regular... It's, like, old. It's, like, it's like, just, like, it was, like, it was, like, some old kit. But, yeah. And I built, like, a cause pad and stuff like that. And they're all right. Tolerance is tight, but I love how that ends up looking. Yeah. Okay, this one's a little bit off. Okay. Actually, use the caps that are from this set. So I can... This one seems a little tilted. Oh, it is. Okay, I'm gonna have to fix that. too far. Okay, cool. Alrighty. I guess since I am soldering, I'll talk about my sponsors for those in chat. So, my first sponsor is Mint Autumn. So you can head over to mintautumn.com although right now they don't have any projects um, 
like for sale uh, because right now the Rukia group buy round two is already in production. Um, so right now I think you only, you can only purchase uh, gift cards over there. Um, but on my Discord server, there's a few affiliate links that you can follow. Um, but uh, more importantly, uh, Mint Autumn, which is led by Jack Static, um, they are currently developing a ultra high molecular weight polyethylene case um, in a TKL layout called Erdma, and so they they are um, you know they're using new processes for the for the plastic, and they'll be making uh, cases made out of this polyethylene plastic and so it'll be exciting when it comes out um, I, I definitely want to hear more so if you want to hear more news about that you can um, sign up um, and join their discord server and ask Jack Static more questions about it and see more updates so stay tuned on that the next sponsor is Del Del Beeson, thank you so much for the follow and hello, welcome. Um, the next um, sponsor is Novel Keys, Novel Keys .xyz. Um, So on Novel Keys, uh, you can purchase any in stock item and get five percent off if you use my promo code, which is Thunder. So enter Thunder uh, during checkout when you're purchasing any in stock item. And you'll be able to get five percent off. Novel Keys right now has GMK Classic Blue on Group Buy. Uh, GMK Classic Blue is a cherry profile set designed by Heine Bush and Arslock. It's a uh, it uses stock colors, uh, white and blue respectively. There's two base kits for that and a space bar kit. So check it out if you want something simple and clean. The next set that Novel Keys is offering right now is Cat Arctic. So, if you like the art, uh, the cat um, profile, if you like the like the cat profile, and you want to check out uh, another, yet another blue set, but this one is like winter themed. Check out Cat Arctic. Um, cat Arctic. And all, it's also being sold along with a pretty cool desk pad. So the desk pad is currently on group by as well. So go check out the Arctic desk pad. Finally, um, Novel Keys also has JTK Zen. JTK Zen is a white and green themed set. Also in cherry profile and sold by JTK and Novel Keys. So go check out JTK Zen. Um, Novel Keys also typically offers switches, desk pads, switch testers, GMK sets, among other things, accessories, stabilizers, and whatnot. So if you have any keyboard needs and supply needs for your keyboard building, go check out Novel Keys and enter Thunder during checkout for a 5% discount. Next up, we have Prime Keyboards. Unfortunately, still no international layout for those awesome key sets. International layout, um, so there are some sets that have international layout support, but unfortunately, the MOQs are not always hit. So it, it it's kind of demonstrative that there really aren't that many people willing to purchase the international kits when they go on group buy, uh, which kind of has been discouraging designers from supporting them. But nonetheless, there are sets that do support international kits. So uh, if at least a lot of key sets do support ISO UK, so if that's the if that is at least the bare minimum uh, is supported on the base kits on occasion. Anyhow, so the next sponsor that we have is Prime Keyboards. So head over to primekb.com for more cool stuff. They have alpacas. 
uh, which will be restocked next and I believe in June so if you need uh, more linear switches and are looking for alpaca switches you can go and sign up for their newsletter on primekb.com or, or sign up for notifications on their Instagram profile and they will definitely be posting more information about that in the upcoming few weeks they also sell cherry and durock stabilizers for your keyboard building needs uh, desk keys tobra silencing rings the duck raven and the sidewinder there are 60 percent kits the t1 tactile switches which are just like zelio v2 switches and the prime e keyboard i also provide an extra promo with prime keyboards so if you are planning on purchasing uh, if you're planning on asking me to build a keyboard for you so if you request a build service from me I can get you any in-stock item from primekb.com at a discounted rate um, so if you are looking to have something built by me and require something that Prime KB normally provides um, then you can ask me and I can likely source it for you at a slightly discounted rate similar to how Novakeys provides a promo code but however this is tied to my build service so you have to you have to uh, request a build service before having access to the discount finally we have project keyboard projectkeyboard.com go and check out GMK masterpiece yet another blue key set but this one's a little bit special it has a lot of Japanese language legends for the modifiers which is a completely new thing for GMK sets as well as um, mono legend kits on the alphas you can still pre-order GMK Bingsu on projectkeyboard.com there's an affiliate link that I can provide in my discord channel so if you hit exclamation mark discord you will have a link to my discord server and there are some affiliate links that you can follow there um, to provide a small kickback when you purchase anything from project keyboard so GMK Bingsu will be shipping sometime later this year and uh, they uh, they are still um, selling pre-order kits uh, which are really part of the extras so if you are looking to get GMK Bingsu and you want to make sure you get it now before they hit the market and before they run out of stock because people saw photos of it uh, get yours now on projectkeyword.com and they have other upcoming projects like the Kendo which is a split HHKB keyboard they have the Nebula which is the 1800 like compact function rollless keyboard much like a sort of like a duck blackbird and the Nixitheria Sophia should also be running through project keyboard in the near future So that's it for sponsors and that's also it for my soldering I think so let's test it out um, Taihao is going to do real international key PVT key set and a lot of people seem to be interested on Instagram that's cool I mean Taihao I would imagine does um, like they do they they provide like relatively cheaper key sets with decent support um, although I don't I think they still do it in OEM profile so that might be the one thing that would deter me personally and also the quality of the legends and such um, so yeah but um, let's see can you go buy alpacas when they restock uh, only if you request a build service from me I can go and purchase alpacas for you. Otherwise, no. <laughs> um, how did I get into the scene? Story time? Uh, long story short, I basically uh, met uh, f like my one of my friends. I met him at an interview when I was interviewing for schools. And uh, when um, and it turned out that uh, he w actually was like basically like my neighbor, um, like he lived like right across the street, and so we like you know like hung out and um, 
one weekend he was he basically told me like hey like there's this event that I saw on Reddit and it was the DC mechanical keyboard meetup the first DC mechanical keyboard meetup in 2016 and um, I still remember the date it's a, it was a Saturday uh, uh, December 3rd of 2016 at 12 30 p.m. in Georgetown University um, in one of the university libraries they held the first DC meetup and so uh, my friend and I attended that meetup and it was it was awesome um, I, uh, I had a great time I like I, I was already into like tinkering and DIY sort of stuff so like it wasn't foreign to me like I, I was like already like kind of like I kind of like knew about like vintage and that kind of stuff before um, so when I went like it was about trying new keyboards and new switches and stuff and I fell in love with two things when one was like ErgoClear slash Zelios, and the second thing was Tobre. I fell in love with Tobre, um, and I really liked like the vintage look for like OG Cherry. Uh, one of like uh, the bigger Cherry collectors, uh, his name is his name was Navs underscore Asp ASP. He was um, he was present at that meet. He was actually one of the organizers, and so uh, he reintroduced me to a lot of that stuff. Coinstorm, thank you so much for the follow and the host. Um, yeah, so um, that's how I got into the hobby. I kind of fell in love with it. I went back home, like after the meetup. I actually got my first artisan during that meetup, get a, like for the giveaway. Although I never got into artisans until months later. But when I went back home, I immediately purchased an HHKB, and I like looked into like getting a Nova Touch. I like, I was like, oh my god, I need one of these things, right? So I was like, okay, I'm gonna start with Topri. And so, um, yeah, I like fell in love with it uh, right away. And I, I still remember like the first month I like spent all my money on like one of the group buys at that time. Like I think it was like, <sighs> what was it? Was it MC Rebirth maybe? Or was it that uh like XDA set? I don't know. yeah, I think it was like an XDA set. I like purchased like SA Ice Cap and then like traded it for GMK Carbon and so many things happened. The first month was was crazy, but then yeah, I kind of like went up and down a lot after that. Yeah, the rest is history. Kind kind of got really into it really quickly. Uh, Rebirth, that's rough. Yeah, Alex, hello, hello, hello. Frosted Flakes, I'm sorry I didn't get to your question. Hey Lightning, how do you clean dirty vintage blacks? Uh, you definitely want to use um, just very light amount of soap and an ultrasonic cleaner is probably the best, but if not, you can always use like a water bath with, um, like a lukewarm water bath with, um, with what should I call it, with denture taps, although that like will loosen this stuff in there, but you'll have to definitely like scrape things out if they're like really stuck on there. Uh, but overall, um, if the vintage blacks are really dirty and scratchy, and even if after you clean it, it already also still feels scratchy, it's very likely that that dirt and grub is already stuck on there. Like, it's been stuck on there for years, so it's not gonna come off easily. Um, so that's something to consider. <laughs> yeah. But, but I mean, yeah. Um, ultrasonic cleaner is, is the best way, most likely. Um, the second best way is like uh, denture tabs or like you like scraping things out with like a, like I don't know, like Q-tips or something, I don't know, something that works. Um, yeah, let's see. Uh, hey, I had a cool, cool idea, toggle clicker keys, does that exist yet? Clicker keys, individual toggles, I'm sure you could program toggles for your keyboard. You know? Can't wait for meetups to get going again. I know, I love meetups. I love meetups. It, meetups are probably the best way to like get introduced to the hobby and kind of like get informed really quickly about a lot of different things. Um, yeah, I personally think the meetup, like going to a meetup is the best way to overall like understand how the hobby works and such. So that 
that's how this goes. Um, okay, and we just put the top on this. Typing on my phone. Yeah, I know. Me too. Um, let's see. Are these the ones? No, that's, that's the big one. Best switch to move on to after cherry browns? Yes, linears for sure. Linears are awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, let's see. Do you carry your expensive pre-builds to work? I actually just take a custom to work. I just take a custom mechanical keyboard to work. I don't care. I don't care what my co-workers, like co-workers, like, like whether they know or they don't know or whether they care or they don't, I don't care. I don't care what they think. Like, um, if it's, if it's like, I mean, obviously I have asked them like if it's intrusive for them and they said like, no, it doesn't really bother me. So for me, that's enough. Like if, if it doesn't bother them, then I just, I just take my, like whatever build I want to work. Um, uh, but, uh, just in general, like I, I take like whichever build, so I don't have to take like a pre-build and feels weird leaving it there. Yeah. I've left like regular custom mechanical keyboard kits there and I, it's not a problem. I mean, I trust my coworkers. And also like my office is really small. Like the office I work in is really small. So if anything happened, it would be abundantly clear who, who it was and that kind of stuff. Um, so not much to fear on my end at least, if that makes sense. Um, I've forgotten the E6 V2 has exterior weight screws. Yeah, man, it's that, it's that old style. Um, Catron Browns. Any suggestion for good linear switches to look at? Oh, there's so many, man. Um, Shadow Tyrant. There's like. Gadron, like Gadron yellows with milky tops are pretty good. Gadron blacks are pretty good. Um, ink switches are pretty good. Gadron inks are pretty good. Cherry MX blacks. Um, Tealios are pretty good. Kale creams, I think, are pretty good if you break them in. Um, alpacas are really good. Any of those, like do rock switches that people talk about, are really good. Um, there's so many switches that are pretty good, though. Uh, hard to go wrong honestly and people will say like oh this is trash but honestly until you try it you won't know just try it you know um but i mean if it's like relatively smooth um stock and like once once you lube it it'll make a big difference so try, try it first That's a nice looking board. So are you. You are nice looking. Oh, the white looks really good against this case. Um, Krelbos are pog. I don't even know what Krelbos are. Glossy online, piecing out of here. Thanks for the stream, it's been great. Nice to see everyone, hopefully another stream soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks for joining in. And have a good evening. Take them bump ons off, haha, ha, JK, JK. But for real, the the board sounds way better without the bump ons. I don't really care. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave my bump ons on there. My bump ons are fine. I don't really think that the, the sound difference is like any big at all. It's only been 15 minutes and you're already done? Yeah, dude, uh, I prelude my stabs. So hey, save, save like 40 minutes there. But if I do a next build after this, 
I will be I have to loop stabs, so that will be longer. <laughs> Unlucky. I have some resin here. Excuse my resin. Where's that speed soldering? It was so quick that you missed it, dude. Sorry. It's so fast that you missed it. I mean, I pre if you if you pre lube your stabs before a stream, like in my case, it's it's really fast. Also, like I've been doing, you know, I've been building stuff for a while, so like it, it comes about pretty easily, I think. Uh, creams, knowledge with silent cherry stem. Oh, that's what it is. Oh, I see. Unfortunately, I don't even like ch uh, silent switches as much, so not my thing. Sorry. Where the cyan homing at? Uh, what do you mean cyan homing? Why didn't you free end dash lightning? What? What am I? What? Am, what? What do you mean free? Oh! 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 Yeah! Seriously, free keyboard, please. Wood, free keyboard, please. Sorry. <laughs> you have to be sorry, dude. Um, <laughs> that wasn't Rose and Smoke you seen coming from the iron. <laughs> Wait, is this the right one? Yeah. I think this is actually a uh, too. I have none available. Oh, no worries, man. I'll be getting, yeah, I'll be getting my hands on one at some point, but I mean, not for like, not to keep. Boom. Caps are on already. I actually already had some keycaps here, uh, so this is not mine. Oh, well, this is mine. This artisan is mine. Nice little key B artisan. And we have this Garbo artisan keycap, which is not mine. This one I actually borrowed. I borrowed since before COVID, and now because of COVID, I can't return it. Isn't that great? Now I get, I basically get to keep it forever. I'll buy that E6 V2 from you, $800 cash. Um, if you make another offer in chat, I'll ban you. Simple rule, right? Don't make cash offers in chat, otherwise I ban you. That's my first warning. If I, if I sell it, I'll list it. And if you miss it, then that's not my problem. Oh damn! <laughs> I, I I I uh definitely wanted to see that that reaction, but uh I, I'm also not lying. I, I do think that making cash offers straight up with like unsolicited is kind of rude. Don't you think so? Like if imagine this, like you you work really hard to get something that you really like, okay, and you just got it right, and Someone hits you up right there and then. Hey man, I'm so happy that you won, but can I buy it from you? Or like, oh, I'm so happy that you got this. Like, I know that you love it, but can I buy it from you? Like right out the bat? It's kind of weird, right? It's like, who likes that? 
I don't know. I don't think anybody would really like that. Some people maybe are like thirsty for the money or something, but if I actually worked to like earn my money and pay my, you know, pay that money to buy something that I like, I wouldn't want to like sell it off right away. Or even if it were like, you know, around with me for a while. If it's sentimental, like, you know, no reason I would, right? I don't know. I don't know. Some people think the, I mean, I don't think of the hobby so much for the money because it's a hobby. I know I'm spending money on my hobby things, right? Like, like I already know I'm spending a lot of money on my stuff. I know it's like a loss, but so what, right? Like, like what if it's a loss? Like what's, what's, what's the problem with making a loss out of a hobby? Like you're clearly spending money for your own happiness, right? I don't know. That's my attitude about the hobby. It's like, it's like some people think about like, oh, I gotta like break even. I gotta like continue. I gotta perpetuate my stay in the hobby by selling things at a like a surplus, right? At a, at a profit, so that I can fund new things. But when the hobby already lets you get things at cost and sell things at cost with zero losses, man. You're being spoiled, in my opinion. It's tilting when people offer you money on Mac market, even though you put not for sale in the post. Yeah, that's that's for sure. It's unsolicited and not not really pleasant. Sometimes I'll offer stuff for trade if a friend has something I don't want. So okay, so I think stuff for trade is a little bit different. You so when you give someone the choice to sort of choose among different things that may have similar sentimental value, or maybe like they actually have been looking for something for a while. It's something that they might consider, not right away, but you give them that choice. I think it's okay. I think cash offers kind of say like, there's like, there's a language in cash offers, like it's like an unspoken rule sort of thing, where like, it implies that you don't really, like it almost implies that you don't really care what that person bought it for. It, it's about you. Uh, it's his hobby, that's why everything is so limited. I mean, everyone's gonna be bitching about everything being so limited, but like, there's always stuff coming out. There's always stuff coming out. Like there's always new group buys for key sets. There's always new group buys for keyboards. Like, y yeah, like it's, it, it is, it is, it, if you miss it, then you missed it, right? Sure. But you can always save money and get whatever else, right? It's a hobby, you get paid back in busy time and enjoyment. Yeah, that's how I feel for sure. I don't know. I mean I think I think it's like if if you if you wanna get like yeah, if you wanna get something that was came out before like you joined a hobby and like it goes for a lot in the market and stuff. It's unfortunate, right? Because the demand is there, obviously it's, that's why people are buying it for that kind of price. And if you miss it, then you miss it, right? But I mean, in my experience, um, I also joined the hobby like back in what I told you, like 2016. This was late in 2016, so a lot of keyboard buys had happened, a lot of GMK sets had already happened, or whatever, right? I missed a lot of stuff too. I also didn't. I chose not to buy stuff in the in along the way as well, because I just at the time I actually was not in the in the position to spend more money either. Because I was like, I, had, I was just working my first job, I was just getting my first few paychecks and stuff. Um, I had a different gig going on, and I didn't want to really spend that kind of money. I was like paying my loans and stuff. And I, I remember like regretting stuff. Um, like regretting like not buying whatever and doing group buy. But, I don't know, it made me realize that if you're patient enough about it, you definitely can get something at relatively like cheaper price maybe it, it won't be like group by price but I've, I've i've had like fairly pleasant encounters over the years with people who say you know what like i did buy this during the group buy and i been using it for a while but i know you've wanted this for a while so i'll, I'll give it to you maybe not for group by price maybe for like 1.3 times group by price 1.5 times group by price okay a little bit more and i'm like yeah you know what i'll just consider it as if i'm paying the group by price i'm getting you a beer or whatever and you know, like a meal, and then you know, I'm getting this key set that I wanted for a while, or whatever it is. Um, I just kind of treat it that way. It's like 
I, I do spend a little bit more for some things that I do regret, but generally speaking, if I passed on it and I don't get it, and I, it, it, the regret does it set in, eventually I just sleep on it, and then sometimes it just passes, like I don't care about it, I, it ju I just move on from it. And sometimes I'm like, you know, I'm gonna save, save now, and maybe buy it later when I can afford it, or when a chance like that arises. When, when someone like offers it to you for a good, you know, for a good price, or when, you know, yeah, maybe an extra came up, something like that, you know. Anyway, so here's my E6. Hello, Johnny, hello. Nice desk mat, I need to complete my Metro. Yeah, the Metropolis desk mat, pretty cool. I don't have the Metropolis key set though, I actually really like the desk mat, but not so much the key set. I actually didn't like the key set as much, uh, but that's just me. Let's see, so, typing test. Gaff Pog. It's, it's a friend's gaff, gaff keycap. Kind of exciting though, right? It's, it's, it, it looks it looks really nice on this board. I've been telling him like, "Hey man, can I keep it?" <laughs> so I'm, I'm just joking though. I borrowed it to um take some photos of it actually. Doo -doo -doo. All right. Well, like three desk masks for Regent GB, but not the one key set. Yeah. Do you see the Mizu desk mat? It's so far. Yeah, yeah, I really like the Mizu desk mat as well. I actually have the the water the water um, symbol one. What switches are we rocking that keep? Um, so Dutch Master, there's a command called uh, exclamation build for this keyboard and exclamation keyboard for this keyboard. All right, let's get this going. And actually, yeah, it's only been an hour, so I might build a new one, a different one. So let's get on it. I actually had dinner early, so I'm not hungry, and that's good. All right, all right, all right, all right. Y'all ready? Uh, is the audio okay? The audio's fine. All right. Cool. I may get the Islander dust map because I like the map, but don't care for modern key sets. Hmm. Audio's fine, audio's good? Okay, cool. Alright. Let's type. Alrighty. I, I don't type quickly, so bear with me. Alright. Three, two, one.
sure that's what it sounds like. Let's see. Y'all got any questions or anything? Um, those vintage MX black sounds like my Gateron black inks. No, no, these are uh, kale creams. These are uh, cream switches. These are cream citrus, and those have uh, MX blacks, uh, vintage MX blacks. So if you want to compare, yeah, these are cream, so they're kind of loud. How would you describe palm and softer plate? I mean, yeah, it is a softer plate for sure. Um, So, They sound very different, right? This is like very like more clacky, has a bit of like a hollow kind of sound to it, like a more hollow, more like spacious sound to it. Uh, Polaris sounds very high pitched. It does sound a little bit high pitched, I think. But I do think this is kind of more also because of the cherry housings. Um, and I th also, oh yeah, so the Polaris, so the Polaris is gonna sound like kind of like more muted dampened because it has both the PCB plate foam in between and the case foam at the on the bottom of the PCB. So this one is like full of foam. So I could see why it sounds more like dampened and like mm, it's it's the opposite of the sound being full because the case is full if that makes sense. White space bar clacky, yeah, pretty loud. I like it though. I actually like this. It makes me feel like I'm doing something, you know, like I'm productive. Um, how would I describe palm though? So palm, um, I would say softer than the aluminum. Softer than brass, of course, um, and steel. So softer than the metals in general. Uh, relative to the other plastics, kind of similar to polycarb. Uh, maybe a little bit harder than polycarb. I'm not sure actually. How much? How how they compare? Uh, it kind of feels more dense than polycarb. Um, so there's that. But overall, if you want like a softer feel, uh, palm is pretty nice. But overall, if I if I had to choose between polycarb and palm, polyethylene and or polypropylene and palm or whatever, all these plastics are pretty similar to each other. I wouldn't bother fussing too much over it. Uh, I really wouldn't bother fussing too much over this stuff. What kind of foam do you use? I actually don't use foam in almost in on most keyboards. Uh, almost any actually. I only use like shell a bit of shelf liner if I have to. But this one, in, like the Polaris, came with foam. Like it, it included pieces of foam to, to, to be put into the case. So I, 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 I used it. Um, just installed stock creams and they sound scratchy as hell. Yes, creams need to be broken in. I've broken these in since, what, what's the date on it? 2018, August. So I got these switches in mid-August of 2018 and I have been using them since then. So I broke these in for like a year <laughs> and a half. Um, and then like lubed them like maybe like a uh, half a year ago or so. I don't even know. Do you need to lube them? Lubing them is nice. It, it will make them, it'll make them, uh, it'll dampen the sound a bit and also it'll make them smoother. So yeah, lubing will definitely cover those blemishes that make it um, a bit scratchy. So I would recommend uh, looping after you break them in a bit. Yeah. 
So we have these two keyboards. It's like a, it's like, it's like ice and fire, you know. <laughs> but uh, let's not let's put this one away to not detract from the beauty that is the E6 V2. has a cool side curve here to this. Pretty nice. And as, uh, this is like a cyan top, uh, dark blue mid and a cyan bottom. Um, and this is what it looks like. I, ha I bet he has more miniature figurines than keyboards. Yes, most likely. <laughs> uh, he probably means artisans, but yeah. Thank you so, so much for the follow, uh, Sainu. How many keyboards do you have at the moment, though? A lot. More than two, less than a hundred. Yeah, this is the E6 V2, my friends. Favorite keycap set? Hmm. I would say it's the Cherry G80 1 3000 SAT, which is an OG Cherry key set. That looks pretty good. Pretty nice colors. But I mean, okay. If I said other key sets though, if I said like GMK sets, I like GMK Dolch, the classic GMK Dolch. I like it a lot. I like GMK Honeywell quite a lot. I like GMK Carbon, regular GMK Carbon quite a lot. And I like GMK Hyperfuse R2 a lot. It's the white uh, alphas and purple legend one. The classics, yeah, I'm a boomer. I like new sets too. Don't I mean? But I, 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 I think the other ones just kind of grew on me over time, so I'm kind of biased in that sense. I mean, that's what it happens. It's like you, it's like habits. It's like old habits. Um, would you say gas mount is worth the hype? Yes and no. It depends on how you implement it. It depends on what you build into it. I think, I think not. Just like, just like not every like sandwich mount, top mount, bottom mount, tray mount, whatever, is great or amazing in particular. It's going to be the same with gas mount, right? I think it just depends on what keyboard it is, how they designed it, like how you know. Honestly though, I would have to try to know. If I don't try it myself, I don't it's hard to judge. Really hard to judge. At least in this hobby, you get the guarantee of being able to sell stuff at cost and not having any losses after a group buy. But yeah, it means you do have to put like whatever the four hundred and fifty dollars or whatever, three hundred four hundred dollars or whatever onto a group buy keyboard, but um, yeah. What are some uh, examples of underwhelming gasket mount? Mm, okay. I don't think I've had particularly underwhelming experiences. But I mean, the thing is like, gasket mount doesn't jump at me like as if it were like some revolutionary thing. It jumps out at me as in being a uh, closer to some people's preference sort of thing. So like if the bottom out and that kind of stuff feels softer and that's what you're looking for, it's going to be really nice. Uh, just like having a softer plate defines that experience, the mounting is also going to change that. So for me, when I first tried the gasket 00, the gasket 00, which is particularly bouncy, very bouncy, 
that one was like really shocking to me. I was like, man, like it feels really light to type on this. And then later on, I've tried other things. I've tried the E615, I've tried the Jane V2C, I've tried the OTD 356 Mini uh, before, not like on stream, but like at a meetup. Um, and they all like type really well. But um, like actually the 356 Mini is pretty rigid. It's like a sandwich. It's pretty rigid, uh, especially if you're not using the half plate. Um, the full plate experience was pretty normal. You know, I didn't feel like very special in, in that sense. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, a, his, it's a historical keyboard, like a, like a board that carries a lot of history. Uh, but that's the real significance of it. And that it's like one of the first to do that gasket mount process, right? And there's also not that many gasket mount keyboards right now, right? Like, I mean, there's Keycult, but Keycult uses like that isolated gasket mount process where it's like they use these poron strips between the plate and the case to sandwich them. Uh, and then there's like the unicorn slash um, like 356 mini slash K slash uh, like gasket OO. They use that full O-ring to, to mount the, the plate assembly. I think the two vary quite a bit. I think the Poron ones, like the Bauer, like the Key Cults, like like um like the Polaris, um all these different ones kind of make the sound like they make they make the yeah, they make the acoustics pretty uniform, which is kinda of nice. Um, from how I feel about it. So if that's kinda of what you're going for, I think like a full aluminum plate or like a full like F4 plate, whatever it is, and those keyboards with the gaskets, they make for a really nice uniform kind of typing sound experience. And it's, it's pretty pleasant. Um, I wouldn't hype up one or the other for a particular reason. I think they all have their pros and cons. Um, so for instance, like Key Cult, uh, the main disadvantage of their particular mounting method is that because the gaskets are on top and bottom, it requires thicker bezels to implement it. So if you're not of the type that wants thick bezels, like if you don't want thick bezels on your keyboard, a key call is going to be less likely um, uh, to be in your choices because the tabs take space, take up space. The tabs do take up space. And so your like top and bottom bezels will be thicker for instance like the original number one was pretty thick um and then it got thinner and thinner as the revisions happened but even then uh you can notice from like looking at photos and stuff that the the bezels are kind of like thicker i mean of course it's not like rama or like whatever where the bezels are like aesthetically like it is an aesthetic choice for them to be thick right i mean of course it could be an aesthetic choice too but i i, I do think like the tabbing method requires more space than than like a top mount would, right? Like a top mount just has like small tabs for the screw holes and you know, you just uh, use the screw holes to attach it to the top piece. Things like that. Um, overall though, I mean, I, I like to try things out before I judge them. So I don't want to say something and, and kind of like make it sound like it's an absolute statement. Um, that's really not my stance here. And also just, I, I kind of, discourage people from doing that because I, I think it's kind of silly to think that you understand a lot of these things and it's not like it's a scientific experience like all of this hobby and a lot of the things that happen in the hobby are very empirical like they're experience based like people have to like people need to try it out and then sort of like build a frame of reference and then kind of go from there um, like in my first like year of the hobby I use a lot of stock switches because I wanted to like understand how switches work and like how they felt stock before I like modified them. And then I built preferences based on that. Like I built a preference to use thinner loops initially and then later thicker loops and so on. Just like, yeah, different preference. Okay, so it's all, only been an hour and 20 minutes and I actually have time to do stuff. So, do you guys want me to build another keyboard today? <laughs> I'm gonna run out of stuff to do later though. But um, I could build another one. Double build again. I could. Can you show your 30, 3077 Sal? Yeah, I can. Uh, maybe I'll do that first. I'll be right back. 
If you have any questions, like, let me know. sound test just got here yeah sure keyboard preference is subjective too yeah that's true I'll just do a quick like quick test for the um for Rackham the Rouge I'll do like 30 seconds of this just really quick all right so just listen in Uh, help kind of sounds kind of thocky yeah it's pretty nice all right so who was asking JT jet JT jet uh, if you're here in chat Ooh. so this is my sleeve for this and this is the show the back first this is the G8137 SAU. It's a custom build actually. It's a full size custom build. The cable and stuff. Um, there's a um, there's a PCB below this. So you can see that there's a PCB right there, has some MX Blacks on it. And I can type on this actually, I'll just do a quick test. It is plateless, just like old, old um, Cherry MX boards. Where do you find all these vintage boards? So this one, I didn't find it, um, I had to I got the case separate from the keycap, separate from the keyset, separate from the switches. I got everything separately. Um, so I had to source every component separately, and then I assembled them all together. So this took like a year to like kind of get all together. Um, it was it was good stuff. Um, it's good stuff. I mean, this this I actually really love this. Um, the sound of this is oh so nice. You'll hear it. Let me show you. Actually, why, why don't I just plug it in? Oh yeah, okay. Oh wait, uh... Mm -hmm. oh, actually, is that the function key? I don't remember which one is the function key. Um, so... Let's go in here. And, uh... All right. Um, wait a sec. What is this like? There we go. Okay. So I'm gonna type on this. This is an NCR 
case, cherry keyboard with PVT dice up keycaps and I think 63 gram MX blocks. Plateless, so no plate, it's just a PCB. Here we go. Here's the mods. That's what it is. What do y'all think? So JT Jet, I hope you saw that because you requested it. If you missed it, then check out the bod. Yeah, gotta love those old plastic case acoustics. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, large plate, uh, large cases like this, and also relatively thin, like kind of well thin relatively and then this again also doesn't have a plate so that will change the sound completely I think uh, yeah no has a great sound I, I actually really like this um, people have asked me oh are you gonna sell it or something like that and I've been like I actually really like how it sounds like I actually kind of want to take this to work um, yeah it looks great right so this also has that so the NCR case is notable for this uh, gray top, beige bottom look to it. Um, and also the keycaps are actually not so beige, they're more like a light gray as well. Um, they are beige-ish, but they're like beige gray. So they're a little bit different from the 909 classic, like OG stuff that you see out there. Um, but NCR, yeah, they made these two-tone cases. NCR made some gorgeous boards. Uh, don't forget, I mean, these are all cherry boards and then NCR branded. So you could find the same case with a different badge, every, like, you know, in, in a lot of different places. But NCR was notable for this particular one. But there's like routers and Xerox and like Desco and like Cherry and Peacock and C like Siemens Nixdorf, right? Like there's all these like oh, like a like a million companies that like basically uh, basically bought off OEM keyboards at the time, uh, like POS OEM keyboards at the time from from Cherry from Cherry Corp, and they rebranded it to their own office brand or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cherry was a big um, POS, like point of service keyboard provider uh, a long time ago. And they still are, sort of, actually. Um, just in, you know, more modern ways. Uh, what are some TKL wing keyless that you like? I mean, there's so many. There's so many, Johnny. There's like 
BGR Jane, Mira, Duck Orion. Man, like there's so many. And Dash, yes, and Dash is awesome. Oh well, that's if I see it in person. If I don't see it in person, then I won't know. Uh, Moon is great, yeah, Moon is great. Um, your top acoustic talky one? I don't know, man. Find out for yourself. Come on. You need to. You need to try these things out. It's hard to say. I, I I can't say like I mean like I I've tried I try like so many different boards but at the same time like I feel like they all have their merits. Um, I don't know what to say like top acoustic thoggy one like how do you even respond to that question? Uh, top acoustic thoggy. I don't know. Sorry. If you want Thaki, what you really want is Topra. Hell yeah, Topra is fantastic. I love Topra. Oh, Dashkov, hello. Um, even if Lightning could give you an answer, yours is probably different. Yes, that's probably correct. My holy grail is the Xerox 6085J2 keyboard. Too bad people just harvest SKCM greens. Oh, those are the neon greens, I imagine. Yeah, from them. Mm, that's a bummer. Dashkov, so what do I think about CRP R3 sets? Um, let's see. I'm thinking about this. Three things. One, no R5 support is such a letdown. It's a huge letdown. I'm very disappointed about it. Uh, I think like it pretty much prevents me from wanting to buy it because R5 for me, for classic sets, is the appeal of the sets. R5 is huge, like very, very important for me. I love R5, um, especially if it's like cherry related. Um, that's a big one. Number two criticism is the compatibility layout support. They basically said, Hammer basically made, basically er, they're declaring that they're not going to change the kits as they are. They currently support like what? They currently support like maybe like set like uh, like seven U bottom row like six point two five U and like some ISO right, but they don't have like sixty five seventy five eighteen hundred CP HHKB support at all. Like there's no there's a short shift. There's no split backspace. Um, like there's no column keys or anything like that. Like I mean, it's it's just like a mess. Um, in that regard, so. Yeah, like you could support like your typical TKLs and full size and whatever, but I think the enthusiast community has grown so much that it's kind of <laughs> it's egregious that um, they don't have like the compatibility for for this, especially if they supposedly did these small kits for the R two point two that Syrup Labs from Canada ran along with them. Like it, it makes no sense. Like if they had compatibility kits. Why do they not do it now? Why do they have to restrain themselves from doing it? It doesn't make sense. It's just a few keys. Like even just a split backspace and a couple of like, you know, the delete end and page down from uh, for 1800, like and the zero key or whatever, you know, a few additions would, would do it, but it makes no sense. So those are the two main things I would say I have to criticize about it. R5 and the key and the, and the compatibility. And then I guess third might be just communication. I think it's still pretty bad. Like they go through drop um, and they kind of like, like it's like, they try to like make it seem like it's very well communicated with the Western keyboard community. Uh, but I don't think that's the case either. And especially considering that there is a very large demand for those sets here. Um, and like also like on Taobao and stuff, right? Like I, I do think that there's going to be a lot of enthusiasts all over the world who will want that kind of support. And but I think the communication is just like very indirect, uh, very not personalized, uh, just like very 
yeah, very distant. It just feels very distant for them. Uh, which is a shame, considering that they're trying to make this a staple sort of thing, like where they like run these classic sets, uh, like classic recreations of sets, and um, and they can't manage to get those things right that they supposedly got all criticism for already twice or three times before. It's it's like they're not learning from those lessons, so that that is disappointing to me. It's like why? It's like why go through drop again, or like why? Why like not have the compatibility right? Why take out something that was supposedly appealing on the first try? Uh, can't live without sweet backspace. Yeah. Did, did you notice they labeled the kits with an R5 placeholders but no caps in that profile? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So so weird. Okay, so an hour and a half and we're still going. Let's go. Let's do this. Second 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 mill. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I, I would be uh, doing other things anyway, so uh, let me see. I need to edit my stream title though. Um, y'all gonna stick around? If you can, if you guys are gonna stick around, I'll stick around too. Let's see Where's my dashboard. Dashboard. Uh, stream manager. Hey, Zylo Shoe. Hello, hello. What we building next? You'll see, you'll see, you'll see when I change the title. Also, it seems my internet is doing all right, so this is a good time to build more before it all goes to hell. All right, also, this, these are all personal things that I'm rebuilding, so I kinda wanna get it done, uh, get it out of the way. Boom. New titles up. And I need a command. Edit. Um, where are my commandos? Look at this chat actually typing on his artisan. So proud. Imagine that. Imagine, ima imagine mounting your artisans. W what is, what is mounting art? Like, wh what? What? You believe it? I actually mount my artisans right away. Um, two reasons: one, to check like the the fitment. I've had artisans that have been crooked or like whatever, and like if you contact the maker right away, if you did win a raffle and stuff, um, then you can manage to like figure something out. Uh, if not, if that's not the case, then it's a little bit of a different story. But at least like you can know right away. And second, also just because I almost always get artisans because I want to fit them with a particular key set and stuff like that. So I actually look at the how it fits with that key set so, so I can determine like whether I want to keep it or not. Uh, two reasons. Um, I want to build my first keyboard. Any suggestions as to what and where? Um, personally, I guess there are like, I mean, KVD fans probably maybe have some keyboards in stock, but I mean, your first keyboard though it depends do you want to build it yourself or do you want to get like a like an like a off the shelf that's pretty good cuz like if, if you want like something off the shelf like Leopold's like duckies and Philco's are really nice if you want something custom and you wanna and you're gonna pay all that oh, okay you already have a ducky and you want to build it yourself then yeah like checking out like KVD fans if you want something like on the cheaper end um, there should be, there might be like NK65s coming to novel keys later, so might want to look into that too. But yeah, it depends on your budget for sure. Check your budget, decide on what your budget will be, and go from there. There's so many options, and many price range, uh, and many like price brackets, so yeah, go from there. Gotta go take the doge out. Oh, doge. Yeah, no worries, dude. Take care, man. Take care, Pluto. I'll see you around, as always. <laughs> Yo, what's up, Droke? Yo, what's up, dude? Alright, next build. Um...
Um, I actually need to reload these tabs probably, so I'm gonna have to touch these up. <laughs> that LED burning, <laughs> so bad. Also, this keyboard's so old, guys. This, this, my friends, this is my first custom, like, this is my first, like, uh, my first Korean custom. Wait, how many boards are you building today? Uh, two. I already built this one, and I might, I'm gonna build this one because it's been already an hour and forty minutes, and I'm, I'm not done. So yeah. LEDs install themselves in the metal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna edit my uh, commands. So let's 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 make it clear what I'm doing today. Lightning is building an octagon. No, a duck octagon V1 mechanical keyboard for a rebuild. It'll be built with. Uh, what are they again? Oh yeah, C3 tangerine switches. Loop with that, they'll be mounted on up. Okay, cool. Great. And oh shit, should have copied it down. Oh well. E6 V2 built with kale and K cream switches. Loop which I was there to for it. Two gram springs and mounted on a full palm plate. Cool. Is it the new tangerines? No. Old tangerines. That angle though. Center at USB superior? I agree. Let's see. Let's try this. Keyboard. Nice. Build. Nice. Alright. <clears throat> so, <laughs> so let me say something. Um, I actually my my original duck PCB got borked, so I actually had these made. Uh, I I asked a friend to help me out back in the day, and this is like a boot mapper PCB actually. For a seventy five percent with a centered USB. Hence, hence the U uh, the LED burn ins. Because I didn't realize that they were on probably and I kept them on and now they're burnt in right into the metal great good thing I can't see it so all right we built number two let's go let's get it I don't like any of the JWK switches I wanted to I like the alpacas. I really like the alpacas. But that's me. I like the tactiles. I have not tried all the tactiles myself. I heard the new tangerines need a lot of work to sound nice. And, or up to par with concurrent linears. I don't know. I don't know much about them actually. I would tell you, but I don't know. Oh, actually, my um, old tangerines are the milky bottom tangerines. So maybe they're not great, but whatever. We'll see how it does. I had a stainless steel plate also before, so I, I kind of feel biased that they were kind of shit. But we'll see. This time, just so I can do these. Oh, packets are pretty good, in my opinion. I'm not sure about V2 Tangies. I I haven't gotten them to try. 
I don't. I'm not planning on it actually. It's like I feel like all the linears are about the same now. I don't really care for the new ones. I've tried just the ones that I've managed to get, but I'm not super interested in getting a lot of new switches nowadays. Just because I feel like diminishing returns. Also, I don't need to spend that much on new switches and have like stacks of them all the time. I'll just buy them when I need to. Oh, Building a few boards today, eh? Yeah, I have time, so I'm, I'm just trying to make the best use out of my time. So I don't have. Because I don't always have this kind of free time. So I might as well get it out of the way before it's too late. But yeah, also these are personal builds. When I'm doing like customer builds, I I try to get those out of the way too, so but yeah, I, I don't I don't get to do my own stuff too often. So this is nice. It's nice to have this free time. Some old school snap-ins? Nah, no, these are screw-ins. These are screw-ins. How's quarantine been for me? Oh man, I've been in deep isolation. Which is fine with me. I don't mind being a hermit. Um, I just need to touch these up anyway, so this will be quick. Um, but yeah, I've I've just been um I've been hanging in there, you know. Um, it's like uh yeah, being outside and all that is nice, but yeah, it's just it's been okay. I, I've been busy though. I, I've been busy the past few months studying for uh, my board exam. So that that happened last weekend. I mean, like last Friday. So now that that's done, I'm, I'm kind of chilling for a bit before going right back into work. So going right back into work soon. So next, the you know, I have a couple of days of freedom before I get back. But it'll ramp up again for me too. I'm a takeout person. Recently, been kind of sick of the same food. Oh, I see. I um, yeah, I try to eat at home more nowadays. So, if you had to sell all your miniature figurines or keyboards, which would you sell? If I had to sell. I mean, you literally just answered the question. If I had to sell all of them, then I'm selling all of them. But, I mean, if I could choose... I mean, of course I would choose the ones that have less sentimental value first, and then the ones that have more sentimental value next. Depending on what my needs are. Right? So, for instance... Like, I'm definitely keeping my TGRJ and V2. Because that one has a lot of sentimental value to it. Um, it was built by Yutsi and I really appreciate it and he's a friend and that kind of stuff. Or stuff like artisans that I've gotten as gifts or that I can relate with a particular memory. That kind of stuff, you know. I get pretty attached to my stuff. Like I attach a lot of emotional meaning to my stuff. So like a lot of stuff is like because I interacted with a like specific individual in a certain way like my friendship with them or like um, like you know they helped me out with something I helped them out with something things like that um, all of your boards are all your figurines I meant so if I had to sell either or hmm. that's really tough the problem is keyboards I can use but artisans I can't if I don't have keyboards Right? So... Hmm. 
I guess if I didn't have a choice, I guess I would. I, I'm a I'm a practical individual, so I probably would have to sell my artisans. But it would pain me incredibly to do so. It, I would probably cry. I actually legitimately would cry while doing it. If I were forced to do it, I I would be crying. I'll be crying. I'll I'll also be. I would also feel so bad towards certain individuals that I actually would like send them letters saying like, hey, like, I'm so sorry. Uh, like, I, I don't want to do this, but I have to do this. Because th there's just like certain things that I don't want to part with or that I would only part with in specific conditions. Like, because they like mean something to me. So that's what would happen probably. I'll feel bad, mostly, for the most part. I'll just feel really bad. But yeah, if it, if it were like a duty, I mean, like if life came first, which yes, it does, then yeah, I, I, I would have, I'd just do it and be like, yeah, I have to take care of whatever. And sometimes it'd be like that because yeah. It, it's still a hobby, so it can't take precedence before, before like more important things. How did I get into building keyboards? What was my first build? Mm, I got into building keyboards. Well, I got into keyboards first of all. Uh, I explained that earlier during the stream. I'll show you how I got into keyboards. But after I got into keyboards, the reason I got into the, the main reason I got into it was because I liked the DIY aspect. I actually thought, I actually thought when I got, so I, um, so I, so I majored in electrical engineering in college and, um, and did like physics and stuff. And, um, so I actually thought I was going to be making PCBs or working on something electronics related, that kind of stuff when I got into keyboards. Cause I was like, Oh, that's super interesting. Like there's these like mech like mechanical key switches and like i wonder what that's about and then i was like wait so these use like these pcbs and like what if i could make some of those um then i was like you know i was like oh i could do that and then i never got into it i just never picked it up never picked up the skill never bothered with it cad i never did it so i don't know cad um so no keyboard design for me because I never experienced it before. I don't have like CAD or vector design knowledge, like vector graphic knowledge. Um, but keyboard building, it came about because I had a few friends who were like, hey, do you want to like build the keyboard for me? I know that you really enjoy this tinkering part. I'm like, yeah, no, totally. I, I loved it. I loved building stuff. I just like ever since I was a kid, I loved doing that too. Like I loved. Uh, okay, well, one time I almost died because I broke apart a CRT. And obviously CRTs are, are extremely dangerous. I managed to put it back together, but it was okay. And, and you know, it was fine. But like, I almost died because it, it's a CRT. CRTs are very dangerous. And um, I, I, I remember like my dad reprimanded me for all that and all that stuff. But but yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm like that. I'm like that friend in my keyboard. Uh, I mean, like in my friend group. Uh, like I'm always like, I'm always like breaking stuff apart and putting it back together. Um, and that kind of stuff is fun for me. So that's how I got into it. Um, a friend of mine who is actually still in the community, he asked me to build his keyboard, uh, wh which was the, it was a Duck Eagle V2. I, so I built a Duck Eagle V2 as a first customer build. Uh, for myself, I actually built, um, what did I build? I think I built a KV75 when they first came out. This was like a V1 version back in the day. And I also did, um, what else did I build? Uh, I did like Topri stuff a lot because I started with Topri. Oh, yo, Mr. Dixie. Hello, hello. How's it going? Welcome, welcome. First time I see you here, actually. Welcome. Good to see a familiar face. Some new faces sometimes. Yeah, I actually am used to having the same faces every stream, which is super nice. It's nice to see new but still familiar faces. Been lurking for a while, that's cool. 
How's work going? How's your Monday? I guess work from home is basically your usual, right? So not much different there, I, I assume. It's going and going and going and going and going. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes I don't bother asking. Maybe I should, you know. The answer is like, yeah, I'm hanging in there. I'm, I'm, I'm doing stuff. <laughs> that's how it. That's how it is. It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm doing. I'm doing. Nonstop keywords, twenty-four-seven, baby. Let's go. Am I the only one from UK right at this time? Probably. I mean, isn't it like three a.m. in the UK right now? <laughs> I mean, I, I, yeah, I think you are gonna be the only person from the UK when it's like the middle of the night. <laughs> Two eighteen. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that that makes sense then. I should try to do more EU friendly streams. Uh, but I need to do that early in the day. Uh, today I, I was just busy running errands, um, so I'm gonna manage to do that earlier. I did plan on it. So I'm not sure if you guys uh, experience this wherever you're living right now, but here in New York City, every day, every weekday actually, at 7 o'clock p.m., like 7 p.m., people like bang on their pots and pans and like whatever, they basically are cheering for the health workers and in the area or like people who uh, work in essential services to cheer for them because they are you know putting themselves at risk to continue to provide essential services um, to people here in this neighborhood and so people cheer every day at 7 p.m. or every weekday and so I was going to stream earlier like around like 6 o'clock and then I was like man if I start streaming now at seven, it's gonna be like, like cars honking, pots and pans, and 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 like cheering and like music, like they are really loud in my neighborhood, because <laughs> it's a Hispanic neighborhood. They get really they get really like, like like it's like it's like party people. Um, so, so yeah, um, <laughs> that happens here. Oh, I'm like sweaty. So yeah, it's 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 like it's like that here, and so I was like, man, no, I think I'm gonna have to wait until after that. <laughs> so I had to wait. So I started streaming like after like a little after seven, but yeah, it, it, that happens here though in New York at least. It's a thing. I'm not sure if it's a thing in your, uh, not in Staten Island. Okay, I wouldn't be mad about that. No, I'm not mad about it at all. I just figured if I started streaming, I, like everyone's gonna hear it, and then I have to like you know. Like I'll, I'll be like, oh, is this sound okay and stuff? <laughs> You'd be like, what, what's going on? <laughs> but yeah, uh, something something kind of interesting about the city here right now. It's like, random fact. I know, I know it doesn't happen everywhere though, I figured. But I, I guess it's also because I live in a neighborhood where uh, I, I live very close to a hospital actually. And a lot of health services around here, so that's probably why. Oop. Come on. Come on, come on, man. What's going on here? Oh, whoopsie. Oh, hey, Toki, what's up, man? You enjoy the artisan on this board? Pretty nice, right? I remember that stream when they were really rowdy, but that's like every day for me now. So I'm used to it. It's kind of funny, though. But yeah, no, one time, like, they were, like, doing, like, karaoke on the streets, and, like, people were, like, jumping around. I'm like, oh, my God. And I'm like, wait, isn't that more unsafe to do that? It's like to, to have a lot of people on the streets. But yeah. It's fun. My neighborhood's pretty fun to live in. Uh, 
people are super like joyful and energetic I feel it's a very energetic and nice neighborhood <laughs> So could have sworn I had one just like it. I know, right? I, I, heard, I heard you had one. I, don't, I wonder what happened to it. Pre-COVID -pre disappearances. Oh well. Can I get a new PCB and build in my ducky case? Probably. You have to use the same PCB that's in your case. Uh, you cut so you can like desolder it if you really wanted to like have it desoldered and then build something new into it You can do that. I like I've done that with OEM like OEM boards But I can't attest to the quality of OEM PCBs in general just because they vary a lot It is doable though um, But yeah, you can't buy a PCB probably a phantom PC might fit? I'm not sure. Phantoms are for Philcos, right? So I'm not sure if the phantom will fit. Yeah. So something to keep in mind. You could see if the phantom fits, but uh, I think it was made for Philco. Yeah, another another thing I would be concerned about is like the controller stuff. Like if it would fit in like the USB slots and whatever. ways to save some money so I can learn and do a proper build later oh that's good I mean that's a good um good way to see it and a good way to go about it I think yeah no save save your money and buy something that you think it's for you but you can definitely like at least start by mm, so a lot of OEM builds uh, they're gonna have plate mount stabilizers if you're using like cherry mount uh, cherry uh, style stabilizers so the good thing about plate mount stabs uh, is that you can just desolder the one switch that's right on top of it So like if it's this, if it's a shift key then like just a, just that one switch and you can take off the Plate mount stab and disassemble it and clip and lube it So even just lubing your stabs makes like such a huge difference That is like the it's like the number one recommendation I would make if you were trying to Modify your keyboard in some way, but yeah, you can't really do it from scratch have to modify your current keyboard most likely that's the unfortunate part take the PCB out of the case I would have to desolder all switches to get stabs no not all not all what I'm saying is you can desolder just the, if it has plate mounts stabilizers you can just desolder the one switch that's right on on the stab if you have PCB mount stabilizers like the ones I'm currently installing then you have to desolder every switch to get to the stab because Basically how it works is plate mount stabs are mounted onto the plate whereas PCB mount stabilizers are mounted onto the PCB below the plate Which means that 
they are completely inaccessible unless you remove the plate entirely. So that's why you have to desolder all of the switches. But plate mount staves are accessible if you remove just the one switch. If that makes sense. Okay, I can check. Is there a give a giveaway as to which it is? I'm a total noob. No worries. Um, yes, you can just, just take off the keycap. Like on the left shift or the enter key or the space bar. If you remove the keycap, you'll be able to tell right away. Um, just look up photos of PCB mount or plate mount and you'll, you will you should be able to tell, tell the difference. But if not, you know, you can ask somebody else. But you should be able to know based on what you see below the below the cap. Uh, plate mount staves also have a very particular like a uh, like a uh, like f shape. They uh, because of the they, they because of the like they have a clip on on the one end where like it's clearly there for it to clip onto the plate. Um, as you can see, PCB mount stabilizers they either like screw in onto the PCB like I am doing right now. Or they like clip right onto the PCB, so they um, don't have that kind of clipping mechanism that would go on a plate. It's hard to explain unless you see the pictures. So I, I do advise you just go on like go on like Google and type PCB mount stabilizers, like PCB mount cherry stabilizers or something like that, um, plate mount stabilizers, and then you'll you'll see what I mean, hopefully. Stabs first. So this one I have 6.25 here. And my switch is over here. Uh oh, getting some slight frame droppage. Oh no. That's no good. Is it really? Hmm. I haven't gotten the error yet. It ain't too constant, so I think we're good. I think we're in the clear. Yeah, I think we're in the clear right now. Oh yeah, you're right. Okay, yeah, I see the small spikes, but uh, yeah, it seems it's intermittent. Uh, I think they're plate mount. Good. Yeah, I, that's what I would assume. Personally, I, I would I would think that they're plate mount. So we have these uh, C3 milky housing Gadron switches, or um, yeah, they're basically Gadron switches, tangerines. in first to make sure that the plate is in place. First step. Put some in the middle here so that it holds up too. Um yeah 6.25 here so Pretty sure Ducky uses strictly plate mount staff, so you should be right. Yeah, I think that's the case as well. Thanks, Rob, for helping out. Alright, cool. 
Now for a proper new question, how do I get them out? Well, um, okay, sure. So, okay, so what I mean, uh, Xyloshu, if you're still in chat, uh, so plate mount stabs are like, I mean, they're different, right? They're like mounted, they have like this clip here, right? They have, they're gonna have like a clip on here, on this part, right? Like on the other side of the wire, they're gonna have this clip that's like clipping them onto the plate. Well, unfortunately, you do have to desolder this one switch. So I'm not sure if you have soldered or desoldered before, but you do have to get access to your PCB. So you, you will have to assemble, disassemble your case. So basically, you know, let's imagine, let's imagine that you desoldered your switch, right? So you, so you, right, like you went back here and you, you know, heated this up and you took off the solder, you know, you desoldered the switch successfully, right? And you took off the switch. Okay. So then they have these clips that I told you, right? So basically you have to like, like push the clip and pull out the, the stabilizer. So it'll basically come off like so on both sides and then you can remove it and the wire will just come out through that hole. Like through, through, through the plate. But you do have to desolder the switch if you want to fully take it out. If you want to fully take out the, the stabilizer, you do have to desolder the switch. If you don't, or if you can't do that, if you don't think you can do that yourself, then what you, I recommend to lube is that you can just lift this um, stabilizer insert, right? You, you lift the stabilizer insert and then you can jam some lube in there. That's another recommendation I could uh, give. But um, just make sure you don't use like any lubricant. Just look at uh, if you do have some like lube, like Krytox or something like that, try to use that. Or dielectric grease can also do the job. Uh, most of the lubes that we use in our community are based, uh, are PTFE based. So um, there's gonna be a lot of PTFE based lubricants out there. So you could um, ask around as well. And thank you so much for the tier one sub. But I hope that helped. Okay, I can do that tomorrow maybe. Okay, that's good. Um, so you'll give it a shot, okay. Well, best of luck. If not, you know, maybe ask around if any of your friends has ever desoldered, soldered, desoldered, maybe they can help. Never too bad to ask for help. should not be afraid of asking questions in chat. Preference, yeah, for sure. But yeah, if you need any help, especially like when we have smaller streams like mine, <laughs> it's a good chance to ask silly questions and newbie questions because I will answer them and help try to help. I know that it's, it's kind of overwhelming the first time you're, oh, this tab is not properly clipped in. That's my fault. That is my fault. I'm gonna have to redo that. But in checking these stabs, these seem all right. I just need to check that to use stab over there. Okay, I messed up there, so I'm gonna have to take off these guys. This plate is so so easy to bend and stuff that these switches just come out even with just my fingers. Okay. No biggie.
Alright, got it back in place. Nice. Um, alpha male not even using fish puller. Yeah, not, I don't. I can't. I don't. I don't want to bother. <laughs> Would the Hako FX D soldering station be a good choice? That's what I use actually. Uh, Sainu. So yes, I recommend it. Do you recommend a hot swappable hot swappable PCB for a build or not? Um, if you want the convenience of hot swap, yes. Um, just something that you need to note with hot swap is a hot swap uh, makes you completely uh, fixed for uh, the layout. So you cannot change the layout with hot swap. Hot swap is one layout only. So that's the only disadvantage of hot swap. Well, that and that hot swap socket sometimes are not installed in the best way. But that's kind of like more like a quality check kind of issue. Gotta take the doggos out. Look, another one taking doggos out. <laughs> Sounds good, man. Thank you so much for stopping by, Rob. Um, you know, take care of yourself. Be safe out there. And thank you so much for the tier one sub. It's always good to see you, my friend. Later. Milky Gat Reds? No, these are C3 Tangerines. What temperature do you use for soldering? 450? Um, I use 350 degrees Celsius. Uh, if you have it in Fahrenheit, just convert accordingly. Should be around like 6 something, 700 almost. Yeah, so um, if you're using leaded solder, so leaded solder means 60, there's like, a, there's ratios. There's like 60, 40 is pretty common. 63, 37 is also pretty common. I recommend either or, doesn't matter. But definitely use leaded solder if you can, because unleaded solder is very difficult to melt. You need, you need a much higher temperature to melt. So I personally recommend using leaded solder. Uh, the thickness doesn't matter as much. Uh, mine is, 0.5 millimeter sounds about right, actually. So I think that's fine. Might be a little very thin, but um, I can let you know which one I use specifically. Um, but yeah, the thickness doesn't matter as much. It'll, the thickness will just determine how much you get out of like a certain length of the spool. But it won't change like the quality of the solder or anything like that, so. But yeah, I do recommend using leaded solder for sure. Leaded solder melts at around like 275 degrees Celsius. So it actually melts quite much, quite uh, like a lot under the, the temperature of the soldering iron. But the reason why you want your soldering iron a little bit hotter is because it, it's, it's because of the heat transfer. You want the heat transfer to be nice and uniform through the iron and into the, and onto the soldering joint. I read somewhere that you form a half cone with solder when heating it. Is that correct? Yes, you want like a cusp. So kind of like, well, kind of like this shape. If, if like the PCB was like this, but something like this shape. So you don't want to heat it for too long. You don't want to, you don't want to, so you want to first put, you, you first, I, I mean, I'll, I'll actually zoom in while I solder. So you should watch while I solder, okay? That way you'll see what I mean. Maybe I'll do that now so that you can see. Also because I wanna get these corners in first. And also I need to test this guy here.
remind you if you're still here check out I'm gonna do I need a su switch opener no you can just use tweezers but look okay so let's try this switch right here okay so my soldering iron is already hot right now at 350 degrees Celsius so first I just tin it a little bit tinning it it means that you put in a lot a little bit of solder on there like such so the solder sticks to the part of the iron that has the best heat transfer so it's that one spot and in, in this part in this in this case I, I have like a chisel tip which is recommended for through hole components um, but the solder kind of pulls right there can you see like it's like a droplet well you don't want really like you don't want to really use a droplet so you can just like clean it off you just want that like kind of like nice and tinned like, like like that silver color so it's like fresh sort of and then okay let's try to make this so that it doesn't okay that should not auto focus too much so now we're gonna uh, solder these guys so I first put my iron I, I, I heat up this pad first like I basically put the iron against the the metal um, pin then I'm gonna put in the solder in and it's going to melt right onto the pad so uh, you'll see like this and then like that and the same for this one as such uh, similarly maybe I'll do this one over here And you know, as you can see, I don't. You don't even need more than like a, a second or two to do that, right? So actually, well, I'll show you the joint now. Let's see if I can. Um, all right, there. Um, let's see. Can you see the joint right there? That la that that bottom one where the D ninety four is. So you can see how it's like a cusp and it's like a shiny silvery sort of color so that's how you want your joints to be you want them to be this like nice shiny cusp like joint so that's a good solder joint if you don't have it so what people call a cold joint is when they put the solder onto the iron and then just like try to drop the solder in that means the solder is not really melting and adhering onto the pad uh, which is bad which means you'll have a cold joint, which is also mean, it just means it's a bad connection. Yeah. Anyway, hope that helped. All right, now let's get onto this. Kind of stalling here, right? Eh? All right, let's do this. see I've also heard about nipping the tips off um, yeah so um, so I know that so you always at least for soldering in general I personally recommend you don't have to buy the Hakka which is more expensive and all that you can buy any soldering iron that has temperature control at least you want to definitely have temperature control because if the soldering iron runs too hot it eats up the iron as it oxidizes over time um, so that's why like so right before I conclude my soldering so I, after I conclude my soldering I bring my um, a little bit of solder and I just tin it like I did and in my case I have a a um, a, a wool um, a, um, what was that uh, it's like brass wool or whatever and then you like clean off the tip like that and then so it ends up being like this nice silver tip and then you can turn off your iron and it's fine so that's how you maintain your soldering iron tip yeah brass yeah brass that's right that's right my bad but yeah that's how you want to maintain your soldering iron tip so that it lasts for a long time i basically i pretty much have not replaced my soldering iron tip for like a long time as long as you take care of it. What are my thoughts on CRP keycaps? Uh, CRP keycaps are very high quality and very nice keycaps, in my opinion. Nice PVT. If you want specific opinions about the R3 keycaps, I mentioned it earlier. It was that compatibility was a little bit lacking. 
it was that no R5 bottom row is a little bit disappointing to me because that's kind of the big appeal for me. But other than that, CRP uh, PVT keycaps are very high quality cherry profile caps. I highly recommend them. They're lovely. Um, I feel confident now going into my first build. Awesome. That's, that's what we want. That's what we want. Um, you need uh, to buy a new iron. I only have a cheap one. You plug it to a wall with no heat control. Yeah, you can use that, but the only issue with no heat control is the fact that uh, it can overheat your pads and damage them, which is no good. When's the next round of CRP? It's currently on mass drop, or drop, my bad. It's currently on drop.com. See the round three one? Yeah. Just make sure you check your um, layout compatibility for that, okay? Because CRP round three seems to be has some limited compatibility, so no split backspace, I think, and no like eighteen hundred stuff. It seems to be on it. You have the option to get like uh, small compatibility kits from previous rounds, but that means you have to find them and such, so just FYI. What do you do? What he do you use to solder the keycaps? Okay, don't solder keycaps. You mean key switches, I imagine. Do not, do not, don't melt your keycaps using your soldering iron, please. Um, but um, I use 350 degrees Celsius for soldering in general for through hole components and let it solder. Let it solder meaning 6040 or 6337. It's Red TV. Hello, thanks for the follow. Mm -hmm. Okay. What temp for desoldering? Uh, about the same, um, if not a little higher, just to make sure that the melting is a little faster. You don't want to keep your desoldering. Uh, oh well, actually, wait. If you're desoldering with a uh, desoldering gun, then you can keep it a little high and it's fine, and because just because you suck it up really quickly. But if you're desoldering with your iron and like um, like a desoldering wick or desoldering pump then you want to keep it, yeah, 350 is fine. Basically anything that will melt your solder quickly. Uh, it depends on how quick you are in desoldering. If you're fast, 
then keeping your temperature high is fine because that means you also won't be leaving your heat on the pad for a long time. But if you would rather have be on the safer side of things, you can put your desoldering iron maybe like at 280, 300. These Yerpy keycaps are so cheap that I'm scared they'll come out bad slash warped. Hmm. I don't know, I feel like their QC has been pretty good overall. Hello, it's red. Might be where... Thank you so much for the follow. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Just making sure everything's nice and flush on the plate. Those Helios, no, these are uh, C3 Tangerine switches from the first round that they ran. For some reason, this guy is blocking my way. built any board with U stems? Yes, I did. Yes, I have. Yeah, if you're if you're talking about the um, the ultra high molecular weight um, polyethylene stems by Inver, yeah, I have. I have built uh, some with uh, cherry um, cherry housings, I think. Uh, oh, Krazi, hello! Thank you so much for the follow. Uh, it's kind of annoying. What is that? That was my desoldering gun. Um, so the problem was that one of the soldering holes uh, was blocked. So I just added some solder and sucked it all up so that they would uncover itself. Could have done that with something else, more like something simpler, but I didn't want to bother. That's heavy duty, <laughs> sort of. Um, I've been, um, I, I desolder a lot of stuff, so it kind of, kind of saves me a lot of time. To do that. Okay, I'm gonna turn on the fan now. It's getting really warm in here. Uh, 
Um, how do different profile keycaps affect the sound of switches? They do affect the sound of switches quite a bit. So you want to try them out, actually, to know what they sound like. Or just look up some tests and stuff, uh, like typing videos and stuff. You'll people, Some people use like SA. SA tends to sound like a lot more hollow. Whereas like uh, Cherry Profile is a little like, it's, it's, they're all different in their, in their own way. Uh, you definitely want to like try them out though. Um, let's see. Okay. Did you say you did an electrical engineering course in college? Yes, I did. I spoke about my sponsors before, but my four sponsors are Mint Autumn, Novel Keys, with whom you can use the promo code THUNDER on checkout to get a 5% discount, Prime Keyboards, which source uh, they source um, different kinds of switches, as well as Duroc stabilizers, Cherry stabilizers, and different keyboard kits. Check out PrimeKB.com. And Project Keyboard, who is running GMK Masterpiece and has pre-orders for GMK Bingsu as well. Had the choice between electrical and mechanical and optical for mechanical. What's the most fun I had during my course for electrical? Um, I did a, I had some fun courses. Uh, one that I particularly remember uh, was a course in um, modern displays. So it was about like OLEDs and like LED, LCD stuff, like screen stuff, right? That one was fun. Um, it was just fun learning about the different kinds and we had like uh like labs around it so we had to like make our like small like little like matrices and stuff like that uh that one was kind of fun um uh i had like a radiation uh what was that um like a it's basically like imaging related class that was kind of fun learning algorithms for image processing and that kind of eventually has become like my sort of like specialty sort of thing um, my field of work, so that I've been interested in before. Um, I actually did my uh, my senior capstone project was actually in robotics, so I worked with a couple of uh, I worked with a, a peer a friend of mine who is also in double uh, E and a couple of um, mechanical engineer. Uh, actually, like two or th like wait, three mechanical engineers, and we like worked on a robot. Uh, for our capstone project. That was kind of challenging and we spent a long time <laughs> working on that, but it was fun. It was fun. It was fun kind of seeing it from the mechanical assembly all the way through to the programming, uh, which was pretty challenging <laughs> itself. Um, but I think both are pretty fun fields in their own way. Um, and they both have their very tedious things like circuits courses, stuff stuff like that are very, very tedious and it can get very annoying in school especially um, and, and I mean I'm sure the same goes with like thermodynamics like in mechanical right but yeah I've done a variety of things Dr. Lane soon, Tian. Uh, not so soon. Not so soon.
What makes high-end keyboards high-end? Such as the key call and whatnot? Uh, there are multiple factors that make high-end keyboards high-end. One of them would certainly be branding slash reputation of the particular maker slash designer slash vendor. Uh, they built reputations over time because they've had like high quality standards such as like you know like good quality checking and basically like making sure that all of the products that they send out are really high quality like you know that the anodization is flawless that every component has worked that they have a good policy for like you know working with customers and so on and so forth so one thing is definitely like a building of a reputation but uh, there is another aspect of it that I would say is just like yeah like the, that the components themselves are high quality they're like like the anodizing quality is good that they work with PCB designers who are well known in the community and um, like you know that the PCBs like you know kind of like don't fail often and like I mean they almost never do but um, that they you know that they have attractive features like that design of course is another element like aesthetic um, people like certain aesthetics so uh, some of these like brands have acquired a reputation for the particular aesthetic slash design language is what people call it um, so that's also going to make things popular um, and then finally it's just like um, uh, yeah, I would say it's at that point it's just like a preference sort of thing. Um, I think some 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 high end keyboards are are like I mean I think like a lot of keyboards are pretty similar to each other, but I think that the high end ones kind of separate themselves just by having like a mix of all those things like high quality like components plus the people who manage it plus like the brand itself plus consistency in design language like yeah they all add up they all add up. To make something high end, uh, but I think they're all essential components. Like you, you, you kind of need, like, uh, like you kind of need like someone who represents that particular group to be like a high quality, high you know, like like a great person, basically, like a great individual, like a great entity, you know, before you can call whatever high end. So I think that's what makes them, distinguishes them. All right to me. Actually, some of these kind of look a little bit. No problem. What am I checking after soldering? I'm checking the li that everything lines up properly. Uh, that the plate is like you know nice and parallel with the PCB. That the switches are nice and flush all the way down to the PCB. Um, that basically everything lines up properly and that everything's pushed in all the way. All right, because you don't want keycaps to stand taller than others when they're on the same row. Makes sense, right? Hopefully that makes sense. to get the screws for this which I need to find actually I think I put them in the box hold on I'll be right back
let's see how to build a keyboard to maximize the amount of thock it makes uh depends a lot on the keyboard actually i would say oh yeah i need to check this before i even do anything about it This one was my... Okay. working um, uh, how would I maximize the thought that's kind of hard though it's a hard question to answer but I would say like well you just it's a, it's just the right combination of plate switches and keycaps I would say I would say like some some switches kind of tend to be louder on the downstroke and the upstroke so that could add to that thought Sometimes the case itself adds to that. Um, yeah, it's, it's a, that's a tough question. I think it's like difficult to really tell whether it's a certain way or the other. I want to buy a one-off keycap for my escape key. When I saw price, my wallet jumped out of my window. Yeah, it can get pretty pricey for sure. See, so I actually used to have a different uh, keycap set on it already. I put whatever it was there back on it. Used to have GMK Yuri on this. Oh boy, but I have to look at what it. <laughs> what the. How, what the layout is like.
I'm getting any emotes? Uh, I should, huh? <laughs> I should, I should. Um, will I soon? Um, hopefully, but I don't, I don't, I, I have to work on that actually, if I will. Let's see, how do I add window capture? at source. Wait a second, where is it? Need some poggers and peoples? I know. <laughs> Sorry, friends. Oh, my bad. Uh, I'm trying to find the. I'm trying to find the page. I'm sorry. Here it is. know what that's about. Alright, so Yuri GMP Yuri Okay, I know where those go. I know where the modifiers go, so I'm gonna put those on first. Some poggers and peoples, though. Hmm, yeah, I I would um I would probably have to hire someone to help me with that because I actually don't really know how to go about it. So yeah, definitely need me to work on that. remember when it's just straight Sterling like Legends? Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, I was like, uh, um, <laughs> I actually do not know how to go about this. And when some of the Legends actually are also like, uh, like, they, they look just like the Latin Legends, so like, it's, it's tough. Most of the modifiers now. Okay, for this one, I'll do mod pipe just because of this cluster here. Alright, I got the numbers down. That's the tilde. Alright, time to flip these over. So I actually know what I'm looking at here. Russian keycap set. Yeah, so this is GMK Yuri. And there was a kit that had uh, Russian legends. So that's what this one is. Uh, 
Um, alrighty. So looking at this, this goes in first. Um, wait. Is it? Is it this one? I think so. This is tough. Um, uh, here you go. a noob question here? Yeah, of course. Go ahead. What is it? What's cooking? It is looking cute, I believe. Also, am I missing a number two? Where's my number two key? Oh, here it is. Let's see. I think your top row is one off. Oh, I might. I could check. Uh... Is it? Maybe. I'll, I'll put everything on and then we'll see if it's really off or not. The W looking key. Letters in the top row. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll probably fix it as I, if, once I get there. This one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, 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 you're right, you're right. This one goes here, this one goes here. Is there a cheaper HHKB alternative? Um, you mean if it's like a Topra cheaper alternative? So if you're looking for an HHKB like actual Topra and you want something cheaper, I think HHKB is the cheap is is the cheapest you can get. Oopsie, apologies, uh, is the cheapest you can get. Um, but um, otherwise, if you're looking for an HHKB layout keyboard in any sort of like um stuff switch most similar to topre hmm you could try you could try an mx tactile and do it in hhkb layout so you could maybe do like a tofu perhaps from kbd fans nay switches oh that could work but i don't know if nay switches there's anything that's like hhkb layout i don't think there is from my um, understanding of it. So that's what it was here. Alrighty. How's that? Let's take this out now. Ah, <sighs> you guys like that. Alright, let's try this out. 
Keyboards you have more than two, fewer than a hundred. Uh, a good number of them. I, I don't know the exact count off the top of my head. Let's see. Um. Okay. Seems like we're doing well. All right. So. Let's um, get this typing going on. All right, nice and centered. <clears throat> All right, everyone. So this is my Duck Octagon. It's a tray mount style keyboard um, with C3 tangerines um, lubed with tri tribos 3204 very lightly and uh, 62 gram springs. And this uh, built it with a palm plate today, so something new, plastic plate. So it should sound a little softer compared to the stainless steel it used to have. Um, I'm hoping it's nice. Let's see, let's see what it sounds like. Ah, we do. Something's rattling here. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> Is that my cable? Something feel like it was rattling. What was that about? What was that about? What was that about? Wait, don't do that, don't do that. Something felt like I was rattling. Okay, I'm not sure. Maybe I'm imagining things. All right, let's try it again. Delicious palm. Yes, delicious palm. All right. Not bad. Um, I think the screw length size is not what I was looking for. I might have pulled out the wrong screws. I might need shorter ones to really put this in properly. Also, that cable is kind of finicky, it seems. But otherwise, it feels good. Um, it does feel good. Sounds okay. The color is great. I love the color of this particular ski set. And board actually so it looks really nice and yeah this is much better than the it is much better than the steel plate I used to have on this but 
but yeah, we have a really steep keyboard here. So, you guys want to take a look. Let's get this out of the way. That's my, it's a duck octagon. That's steep, 11 degree angle. Um, Zylo shoe, any place you suggest to get an extended mouse mat or desk mat? Uh, I could suggest you can take a look at novelkeys.xyz. You can actually get 5% off if you use my promo code, which is THUNDER. They should have nice and large desk covering desk mats. Oh, come on. Risk, <laughs> risk break. Come on. That thing is not coming off, is it? Oh, maybe it's a scratch. Eh, might be a scratch. This keyboard's old. I've had this for a, for a while now. Hold up, what board is this? This is a duck octagon, V1 octagon. Look at those, look at those LED holes over there that don't really work anymore. Yeah, duck octagon V1. Nice and steep 11 degree angle. pretty good though I like how it looks I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to uh, work on the screws a little bit here speaking of duck I have been feeding for a oops I've been feeding for a blackbird oh yeah blackbirds are nice blackbirds are awesome this board looks like the keyboard that the, what? That the Dodo Airport in, oh, okay. I, I don't play Animal Crossing, so I don't know what you're referring to. Never realized it had the lip on top, yeah. That's the way the old V1s were designed. What should I use to reduce pinging on my mass drop alt? Hmm. Result of both the springs of from the new creams as well as the way the board is built. Yeah, probably. So you could try shelf, some shelf liner if you want a cheap solution. Use some shelf liner somewhere inside the case to line it and try to maybe get rid of a little bit of that like resonance going on. Otherwise, if it's the switches, you could always try disassembling the switches and um, lubing the springs. And so for lubing the springs, I actually have uh, Let me tell you my solution to lubing. Wait, is this here? Well, I thought I thought it was. I thought I had it right here, but apparently not. So I basically just use like a Tupperware tub. Yeah, you can just bag lube those. Yeah, so I put them all in a bag, like a Ziploc bag or in a Tupper, like a plastic Tupperware. Uh, put some drops of. In my case, I use I use one of these guys. I use Victorinox Multi-Tool Oil. You can get it for pretty cheap online. Just look it up on Google. Lana, thanks for stopping by. And yeah, have fun. Have fun playing League. Hope you win. Your win of the day. Um, so I use this to, I just add a bunch of drops of this into the, into the bag or the tub. Close it up, shake it up. Then use some tweezers, take them out, put put them back into the switches, and win profit for like five bucks. Pretty cheap though, the the oil, and it works works pretty well. That way you don't have to spend a bunch of a bunch of money on a uh, Crytox. So yeah, don't spend too much money on Crytox trying to lube springs. Streaming today. 
Minterly is streaming. Max on deck is streaming as well. Oh, I should return the I should return the raid from yesterday. Minterly is streaming. So alright everyone, do you guys have any questions? Any any help you need? Any doubts? Any self any concerns? Going to take off now. Have a good night. Um Sanya, thank you so much for stopping by. And uh, yeah, I'm glad I'm glad I was uh, able to help. All right, everyone. So I think I'm done here for tonight. So I'm going to raid Miss Minterly. So let's go do that. But if you have anything else, uh, let me know. As always, I have socials. You can join me on YouTube and Discord. YouTube, not, you know, there's not too much going on. I sometimes put some typing videos on and build streams from before. Um, on Discord, however, if you want to interact with me and other people, you know, feel free to join. You can ask your questions there too. Um, other than that, um, I stream. I don't stream on a schedule, so just pay attention to the notifications, and I'll try to try to stream on a on reasonable times, uh, during reasonable times. And I do have some other work coming up, so I will definitely be reviewing some new products as well. So. Um, Stay tuned for that. I, I have a few new things coming in. And uh, should have some other builds to do as well. So, without further ado, let's go raid Miss Minterly. Let's go. And thank you so much, everyone, for stopping by. And thank you so much for your support and attention. Have a good night. Let's see. 